everyone who loves rock. It won't be another project about popular bands or something well known about history of rock music. Cause people like me who loves rock knows where and when this genre was born, when the first savers of our souls and hearts appeared. But today it's not about them. World's most famous stars of rock and roll, leading countries of heavy music movement. Someone will say that the history and everything is perfectly known. Elvis, White Album Beatles, Woodstock. We will look at the origins and those who raised the flag of rock and roll and added their blood for the world's rock movement. Rock from other corners of the world. Simple question. What is the symbols of freedom? Things like United Nations or Statue of Liberty? Not only. One of the main symbols of freedom, especially mental, is rock music. Somewhere it was a protest as wrestling, as a way to escape, way to other worlds. But anyway, it was a challenge to society. So, I go in search of non-pop music, too, where you would never have thought that it can be. And even with its own stories and struggles. So, we were rock and fuck the pop. The project is a search for alternative stuff, rock, metal in a non-rock, as we thought, countries. And today we have... Welcome, rockers! Yes, yes, Ukraine. In this name, in this word, is both good and bad. Chernobyl, Klitschko brothers, Cossacks, real ones. Euro 2012, the Orange Revolution, Euromaidan, also known as Revolution of Dignity. But now it's not about all this, but about music, without which I personally just cannot live. First the past, then nowadays, and of course music. At the time of emergence of rock music on the territory of Ukraine, it was one of the prisoners in jail called Evil Empire. Soviet Union, which is called by its own people for short, Sovok. Sovok in English means scoop. Just scoop. Like this one. In jail they rarely give you listen to something normal. What you hear chooses the warish commissar. Basically, Soviet music was ideologically loyal, cheerful and positive. Look. Yes, 
часов полевой отчет. Стрелки идут по кругу, время идет вперед. Maybe I am prejudiced, but using children in propaganda I find disgusting. Especially this song is about Lenin, Komsomol, victories of communism, blah 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 blah. Okay, next one. Hey, музыканты, где ваши ноты? Ждет вас сегодня много работы. Вспомним былые славные битвы, Марш заиграйте, старый забытый. Сняты страницы ветром атаки, Пули пробиты, нотны... Heck, who am I kidding? You just look at this shit full of sadness. It's not fun. But most of Soviet people didn't care how bad this music was and maybe even enjoy of this. Where should you go if you are normal in a little not free country? But salvation came. First, of course, illegal. In 1953, Stalin gone off and corn lover came. Khrushchev. Ta colored time comes and became a little easier to breathe. In Soviet Union, bands playing jazz, light rock and roll, rhythm and blues, beat starting to appear. Ukraine isn't an exception and the similar bands appear here. 60s came. In general, what sense was in playing rock in a situation like this? For this it was possible to sit in jail. Also, propaganda works against rock and people like it cause it's from west so because of propaganda people saw enemies in subcultures field or factory workers fools party activists idiots police now they can attack cut your hair Torn your clothes, smash you right into the face. Risky. As I said before, rock is the synonym of freedom. And Sovok lived in idea of communism, but not freedom. The idea of communism isn't bad, but embodiment was awful. Western music was banned to normal and powerfully Soviet slaves. Oh, I'm sorry, Soviet people. Communists did not rot, like in the West. The Soviet Union kept its citizens in iron fist, but wanting to be a human is not decreasing. First bands born in Ukraine in the middle 60s. The examples is Berezeň, Wans, Druhe, Dihenya. They sing Beatles and Rolling Stones songs. Also, they wrote their own songs in the style similar to Western, aid with a local touch and own soul. 
here is the band Berezin. But I must warn, not much records survived to this time and the quality is very low, but anyway, let's listen to it. didn't survive in two reasons. First, it's very very low quality of musical equipment even for that time. Second, of course, political. Imagine, band banned by government. No band, no music. No music, no songs. No songs, no albums. Nothing. Only emptiness. Bands were underground, with no possibility normally enroll in the studio. Often even their songs' names were code names, numbers or no named at all. It's hard to find now something like MP3 of the first bands. They used homemade primitive plates and the life of the plates was very very short cause they pricked it to the holes by gramophone needles they rolled when radiograph emulsion dried but I will tell you about them little later Soviet made music instruments was as good as Soviet cars compared to western cars and to buy western music instruments was a blue unreal dream so often musicians made by their own hands music instruments and other musical stuff making guitar from zero this is not putting a sticker on your guitar you must be a half carpenter and a half radio electricity specialist and of course love music for 100 percent wish to play rock was high real story once on the radio program one citizen told how to make at home a pickup for an electric guitar from a telephone tube but really, that was a really strange story. Maybe it wasn't radio program, maybe it was one of the science magazines. 
with this advice. But anyway, you must understood that there was an economical shortage in USSR, so it sometimes were difficult to get food or even toilet paper. Imagine how it simple was to get a music instrument or some uh, electronic for it. That's why some stuff was handmade and the other was hardly got from somewhere. And that's why people gave advices like that to each other. How to make something from other something. So this information create a wave of stealing tubes from the street telephones. In a lot of cities of Soviet Union tubes were cut or tear. Next aspect. It is rather difficult to obtain experience when you do not have the possibility to listen to your music idols. To know about new waves in music. Sad but in Soviet Union touring rock stars of course were impossible till the last years of the regime. With no chances travel around the world your possibility to visit rock concert of Pink Floyd or Jimi Hendrix and being USSR citizen were 1 to 11 million and 55,000. For example, biggest dream of all Soviet rockers was the Beatles concert here in Soviet Union in Ukraine. But old farts said no and spirit of the greatest band got here after almost 40 years. 40 years. 40 longest years to see your favorite band. Some people even don't live so long. Former party Beatles Sir Paul McCartney in June 14, 2008 gave a free concert at the Maidan Nezalezhnosti in Kyiv. Listen to the legendary musician gathered more than 350,000 fans who did not stop even the pouring rain. After 40 years dream come true. Here is another interesting point. Your grandmother's bones. <coughs> also call it music on the bones. Studio Melodia was the monopolist and the giant of Soviet recording. Logical, it made only ideological right music, so it was difficult to expect something normal from it. It came to the aid of underground recording studios that recorded music on a wide screen. This and even this and of course my favorite this. Sometimes there were some fractures, broken bones or tumor. Such discs called ribs, music on the bones or grandmother's bones. Beatles, for example, you could hear just in this way. Uh, one disc didn't live long, but all industry kept turning till the first available type appeared. But that's unofficial. And what about official plates? Soviet recording monster Melodia, worthy for individual episode. But I'll tell a few words about it right now. On the one hand, the USSR signed the Geneva Convention about copyright 
in 1973. But Melody has worked in the legal field of USSR, where there wasn't necessary to pay for foreign music made before 1973. On the melody plates was no information about right holder of the music material. License to issue was never bought, so basically difference between this and this was only the quality of the plate, but both were pirated, official pirated and underground pirated. Sometimes the melody produced quite modern rock, not specifying who playing the song. In this story problems got, for example, band T-Rex and their songs. In 1974 in Sovok official record melody issued played called Inostranna Musica or foreign music in English with different songs including T-Rex song Hot Love but performer of the song has been specified Jubit What is Jubit or who is Jubit is it a person or is it a band anyway who is this later revealed that the United Kingdom distributor of American record label Hallmark Pickwick Records from 1968 to 1985 issued plates with anonymous cover versions of songs from The Beatles, The Doors, T-Rex, Slate and many others. And here in Sovok such records officially produced but names of the singers were wrong or uh, no names at all or names were just dreamed up or invented. So our mysterious name Jubit is a product of imagination from Melodia Studio or bad made copy from Hallmark Pickwick Records played title. In the same 1974 Melodia produces an album called Vocalno Instrumentalne Ensemble or Vocal Instrumental Ensembles with a couple of brand new hits from Deep Purple such as song Who Do We Think We Are. However, the songs on the plate had no names and the performer was someone called just a wonderful musician. Just a wonderful musician. And that was the all information about Sinner and the song. Listen, Tovarish, listen and try to guess who and what you listening. <sighs> A wonderful musician. Yes, I agree that Jan Gillan and band are a wonderful musicians, but this is not true information. Where is the logic? Okay. Let's imagine that I work in the main government recording studio of the country and here I officially got mission to make copies of the Rolling Stones records and I write discs but the name does not indicate the Rolling Stones. No, who need this? I will call them... Mm, Green Unicorns or True La Lolo or mm, Space Erotic and the Christmas Tree. Mission complete and you will like this album. Damn! Back to our bands. In the middle 60s bands arise in various Ukrainian cities. Kharkiv, Sevastopol, Lviv, Kiev, Odessa and many others. And now let's look some places. Maidan Nezalezhnosti and Krishatik Street. In the middle 50s it was the first place where you could meet 
first representatives of subcultures in Ukraine. For the old Soviet Union they called Stilagi, in translation style dudes. In their image they had something close to rockabilly style, they listened to jazz, rock and roll and Elvis Presley. And Ukraine was the only place this subculture was. In Ukraine and some other places of ex-Soviet Union. Mostly big cities like Moscow or Leningrad. The government struggled with them. Cattle were angry at their reluctance not to be a part of grey mess. As I said before, they could beat cut long hair who was wearing it. Yes, yes, it's only on the rotting west people could safely walk the streets with any haircuts they want. Krishatik street was the place of hangouts. In the middle 60s here behind me was a restaurant called Grot. It was one of the few places where you could hear rock music live. Played by band Cervoni Diavolata. In translation, Little Red Devils. They played covers on Beatles and Rolling Stones. The musicians played covers on the Rolling Stones and others often not knowing English. How it is possible at all? Just Cold War leaves its imprints. First, there were no English schools or courses, except rare primitive school lessons. There wasn't movies or books in English, person to talk. And the worst that KGB could be interested in why the simple Soviet citizen trying to learn the language of the potential enemy? Maybe he is a spy or maybe bastard already sold Motherland for the new Elvis Presley's album. So, musicians played covers just copying like parrots what they heard. So, imagine if tourists who know English in USSR heard these covers, he does not understand the lyrics. And here is Ploshe Peremogi, a place where you could find right people to buy normal rags homemade plates and not only this is supermarket ukraina farsovshiki was here these people had often long coat to hide interesting stuff under it yep it looks like some kind of jerk but they wasn't naked under coats Farsovchiki was such illegal traders who unofficial traded with western tourists exchanging clothes and stuff to different Soviet souvenirs such as pioneering icons or vodka. Pioneering icons and pins like this one. Norilsk. And then Farsovshiki sell things they got from the tourists to Soviet citizens, of course not cheap. Funny, but there wasn't any Farsovshiki on the central supermarket Tsum on Krishatik street. Too many police for them. That guys was a huge pain in the ass for USSR communists. Look at these caricatures you could find in Soviet magazines or newspapers. 
Very good. Another rock address. MK62 settled here at Leontovicha 5th Street. MK means Molodezhny Club or Youth Club. It was the first place where young people gathered to learn how to play beat, jazz and rock. In spring 1967 there was the first contest in Ukraine of rock called Big Beat. Young people was a lot. In the hall there was not enough room for all. So people standing at the entrance to the building, even blocking the nearby street, so basses could not pass. You shall not pass! At that time get a ticket on an event like this was an extremely huge success. The next contest takes place in autumn 1967 and gathered more artists. For the first time there was 12 bands, second time more than 20. First two small contests of rock took place in MK62 on Leontovicha Street in Kyiv. And day of the second contest, 1st of November 1967, some experts called the day when Ukrainian rock was born. <laughs> One more historical rock place. Union Real Big Beat competition was here in March 1968 at the stage of the main post office of Ukraine. This time there was a lot of bands even from other cities and republics of Soviet Union. Only Kyiv bands were more than 30. Sad, but this festival did not became permanent. No fate! In the same 1968 begins a new phase of Soviet-West ideological confrontation. The reasons was the suppression of the Prague Spring. So rockers, jazzmans became again an enemies for the Soviet rule like mm, representatives of enemies western culture some musicians jailed clubs were closed and the contests and festivals ended said years and years will pass before this shameful situation will change well let's change the plate it is interesting, but in the USSR in music there was no such thing as band or group till the 80s. Use the concept of vocal and instrumental ensemble. Just imagine, vocal and instrumental ensemble Black Sabbath, not band. Some of the official vocal and instrumental ensembles of USSR wasn't bad but other 99% of them was awful. Song could be bad, could be shitty, could be primitive, but if it is a rewarder of fame to workers' labor, to grandfather's Lenin, it will be on all Soviet channels, all three channels. So, the first rock bands sounded primitive or even cheap, but it was the first seeds. Their contribution opened way to others, and others came, 70s came. As I said before, after the first successful steps of rock and beat, Soviet ideology starts to press again, and now next real renaissance of rock culture will be after more than 15 years. 
But it doesn't mean total silence before this. In this period rockers go underground, but even at this time there were bands playing jazz rock or art rock. Bands like Croc, Reportage, Oreol, Credo, Crossword, Vizerunki, Shlehiv. And now example from 70s. Jazz rock band Arnica. Zardala, moja, moja gitara, rozbylas do svitku, krsta na čara. In fact, Ukrainian rock in 70s did not defer variety. Wanna play? Then play dammit pop music, kiss ass to party leaders and you will have money, you will have normal musical instruments, equipment, even the possibility of touring to other countries, even western countries. Or other way. Don't play too loud, don't use protest lyrics in your songs and maybe they won't touch you. It remains only to listen to western music underground. Fresh new sound heavy as Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin and lead a dream play one day just like they are. Or the extreme way. Play and sing what you really want to your small cycle of friends in a place like flat, basement, garage. With others like you, enemies of a normal society, drunk by cheap port wine and a desire to be free. 
That was time of eyebro man who loved to kiss and high oil prices. That's why everything costs a penny. Stagnation, stability, swamp. Same bad stability touched Ukrainian rock in 70s. No progress, nothing new. I'll better tell you a story about underground life of that time. This story happened with my own father. He wasn't a musician or an opposition to current government, but he loved good music, means rock, and related to its parties. Real underground party. That episode of the middle 70s. Imagine a few large islands in the middle of two million city, where you can swim in the summer, there is a couple of restaurants and this all called Hydropark. But the island is quite large and there you can easily get lost in the forest and walk bushes and trees for a long time. Somewhere where island is ending there is a hangar for boats. At night party people get there by small forest trails. And now the formula of Soviet underground party. Plus flat basement country house. Plus friends, dudes, mates. Plus wires, cables, speakers, recorder. Plus a lot, no, super mega ultra epic lot of port wine, the cheaper the better. And multiply on rock, rock and rock. Turn the light and party, several hundred people dancing in the shadows. Well, you guessed it is not legally and therefore takes place away from the eyes of the townsfolk. In the Middle Ages, witches Sabbath had similar principle. Gather all friends and have a good time until the Inquisition did not see. But the Inquisition as the KGB, police and Komsomol activists did see. Unknown where they learned about the underground party, but here happening next. Hangar surrounded by police, they crushing inside and starting to knit everyone. Guys is said to run in all directions. Some of them even jump into the water and swim to other bank of Dnipro river. Or others, like father, flees into the dark tickets around and then calmly goes away from pharaohs. Underground Romans Getting to desert places at night to listen to your favorite music and hang out. And then warming up, running from the cops. 70s ended, 80s came. Not so many of the first half of Soviet 80s can be told so sure. You could search in internet Perestroika or Glasnost. 1985, year when rock renaissance in Sovok and Ukraine started. After Brezhnev in charge was a couple dudes that nobody remembers. And here in the time of Gorbachev begins Perestroika. Rockers came to light. New type recorders appeared and played a huge role. Now it was possible to make copies of your favorite local bands or western songs almost seamlessly a type format in USSR called just cassettes it's fine if you have type and pencil and you know what to do my congratulations you're very smart or from ex-soviet union soviet made type recorders didn't have rewind function buying western was almost impossible. That's why if you want to hear your favorite song one more time right now, act like this. And they acted all country. 
I'm not kidding. In many Ukrainian cities rock clubs appeared, but they are not similar to those first yacht clubs of the 60s. Discussions, meeting fans and musicians, exchange of experience. One more rock address. Prospect Perimogi 38 Kyiv. First real lock rock club opened here in 1986. Name of the club was Kuznia in translation Smithy. I said first, I mean in Kyiv, because first <laughs> rock club in Ukraine opened in Odessa. And Odessa's rock club was the second in all Soviet Union after the Leningrad. After it, rock clubs starting to appear in other Ukrainian cities like Donetsk or Dnipropetrovsk. For example, rock club of Kharkiv started at the small cafe place at the Sumskaya street. Or first rock station of the rock club Lviv took place at the utility room on the outskirts of the city. Beginning of Kyiv Rock Club was music festival in 1986 called Debut 86. A lot of Ukrainian rockers like bands Adam and Wavilon started right here. Later bands from Kuznia like VV giving concerts on festivals in other Union cities like Riga or Moscow and of course Rock Club takes guests from other Union republics like band Vezhlivy Atkas from Moscow. To the country finally comes real heavy music played by local bands. In other world hard music like this appeared in the beginning of 70s here it came only in the middle of 80s. Appeared and starting to create music like this, such bands as... Mm, Perron, Quartira 50, Komu Vnis, Razne Ludi, Dialog, Lady Jane, Titanic, leaders of Alternative Wing were Kolesky Assessor, VV and Robota Ho. Tverkonova Cislo and Grupa X, PS, VV and Quartira 50 called first Ukrainian punk rock. In the late 80s Ukrainian national movement starting to reborn. Basis as any progressive movement was students, was intellectuals and people of culture, like rockers. So very interesting folk rock appears. But the main motives of lyrics was Ukraine and its people, its history and different relations, things like love or friendship. Spot of national consciousness is a festival that started at the end of the 80s called Chervona Ruta, Red Rue. Festival tours in different cities of Ukraine for years. Chernovtsi was the first city, then Zaporozhye, Donetsk, and the festival is still alive. This is mostly folk festival, but in 1989 there were rock bands like Brati Hadukini, VV, and Zimovi Sad. Flowers, national spirit. Pretty girls under long dresses even sneaking Ukrainian flags to bring them at the festival. Ukrainian national flags. And now it's time for example of 80s. It will be band called Komovnis. They played on Chervona Ruta too. Нет добить 
до носами, а кормить их тело с носами в Это в Это только в ши, ши моей души. And 1991 came. I can tell you how communist regime crumbled, but it will be long and boring. Better, I'll show you. And now no one will tell you nothing about what you should listen to. And for the first time, the problem of freedom is that some people don't know what to do with it. With all the problems that brought independence, advantages in it still was much more. The economy and society situation wasn't great for the first time, but for the Ukrainian music it played a positive role anyway. Before that, Ukrainian rock always behind new styles, trends. Now it was equally to other world. New waves in music and tricks appears in Ukraine almost simultaneously with other countries now. Now you can safely buy all music you want. 
And now rock culture in Ukraine develops quickly. Because, for example, we have normal equipment, modern tools. Now we know how to record sound professionally. I was in seventh class in school and remember that on TV started new channels. P.S. On the beginning of 90s Ukraine had only two channels. And they translated rock music videos sometimes. Before that we saw only terrible pop music sometimes on TV and rarely. The first program about music I personally can remember was Hit Fabrica. It was comedy hits clips with Ukrainian rockers music videos sometimes. Also I remember Territoria A and Hmarochos on ICTV channel. It was about different western music and of course rock music too. At the end of the 90s I heard new radio station with rock music. It was Radio Zolotivorota or Golden Gates. Radio for strong and free. And they became my favorite for long years. But first private radio station in all ex-Soviet Union plus first rock radio station in Ukraine was Radio 50, Radio 50 from Kharkiv. They started in 1993. That time I had Mayak. It's a huge type recorder with radio. It had function to write song from radio on a type. And that's how I accidentally destroyed rap album of my classmate that gave it me for a few days. Yep, I just forgot what type right now inside the Mayak and recorded radio broadcast on it. Okay, little later first TV channels appeared that played music videos for 24 hours, but mostly pop and I don't want to talk about them. First 100% rock channel that I remember was Enter. 24 hours of cool heavy western music and special hours with Ukrainian rock bands. This channel was first that I turning on always coming from school. Then comes A1 and MTV and became favorite to me and my friends. From 1991 till 2000, a lot of Ukrainian bands was born and now Ukraine have all genres of rock music and just generally wonderful non-pop music too. And here is some examples. Okean Elzy. P.S. They are like Ukrainian Beatles or Oasis band number one or Druga Rika good examples of pop rock Brati Karamazovi real rock for bikers Green Grey Toaster the NMK Tartak bands Otvinta and Mad Heads play rockabilly or how we call it here Ukrabili Kamiany Gist Mandry Motorola Cool Before Trans former and heavyweighters like Das Machine, Skin Hate and Armada. Ukrainian rock bands singing Ukrainian, English, Russian, other languages about what? Like rockers of the world, about joy, hate, fight, despair, friendship, things like that. And this is time for example from 90s. It will be concert video, not only picture with the sound, like previous times. This video made in 2006, but the song is from 1994. Well, let's see and listen. Brati Hadukeni, Fine Misto Ternopil. Ternopilski variety, nastal vash chas. Oh, 
наші троки Я вчитися не хотів, я втік від тати з мамом Я Бог на все забив В Тернополі торшовка та у ширку Дімедроу Я ненавидів поп, я слухав ті короти в роках Вася, старайся не трусити поки Тоби бродя, а п'ят твої поїдем, файде місто Терноти Зустрів чоловіку, їй шістнадцяти не було Це очі малолетка, але в ліжку я так хула Я з нею все забув, забув про ширку і Дімедроу Але вона любила диско, а не рок-н-рок Мама, Вася, старайся не трусити поки Тоді бродя, а п'ят твої поїдем в файне місто Тернопіль from 2001 till 2010 I can mention for example mm... Boombox Aesthetic Education Gorgi Shelly Talita Kum Tick Fleur Fleet Sky Istok All worthy and almost impossible to name all of them from all cities, towns, villages of Ukraine a period of complete rock festivals came. From Soviet times and 90s, rockers sometimes took place in different festivals, like 90% of pop music and 10% of rock. So they didn't play main roles, uh, rockers wasn't headliners. Now we have festivals that gathering only rock people and rock music. And that's great. Some festivals were only once, some make us happy now and every year. Here are a couple examples. Like Gnizdo Bila Cerkva, 
Захід Фест, Львів, Рок Січ, Київ, Схід Рок, Суми, Республіка, Кам'янець Подільський, Пікейні Джилети, Одеса, Friends, Great Music, Beer, Like in Good Old Song, All You Need Is Love. Well, not only to have a good time, sometimes all we need is to lift our butts from coaches. Yep, laziness is number one enemy. In general, rock festivals are more than 20 in all corners of the country. And this culture continues to evolve. And that's great. Foraging rock bands now visiting Ukraine often and they all get extremely warm greeting. You would also be glad if waited for your idol 5, 10, 15 or even more years. For example, Metallica or Red Hot Chili Peppers, of course Motorhead, Alice Cooper, Offspring, Pain and many others. Now I am ending this chapter. On my calendar it's 2015, so it's therefore difficult to talk about Ukrainian rock music of this last decade, because it's not over yet. After 2020 I will return to this topic and of course we will talk about what's interesting in you. Uh, in Ukrainian rock culture took place from 2010 to 2020. And in the end it will be example of Ukrainian rock music from zero years. Dim nasumish v Kraini Eluzi. Bye bye friends, make louder, enjoy it, take air orgasm.